Hey, uh, <clears throat> I'm speaking now with Luigi Marcantonio. Marcantonio, and we're here in West Hartford, Connecticut, in the Marcantonio's home. Uh, Mr. Marcantonio came from Italy in 1954. In May. Uh, in May, so that was very soon before Ellis Island closed. Right. And um, he came on the Independence, and uh, he was 40 years old when he arrived right. here, and is 86 at the time of this interview. Mm -hmm. And this is Janet Levine for the National Park Service. Okay, <laughs> well, I was very interested um, for to start with, why don't you say why you wanted to come to America? It's a better opportunity, finally, because in Italy it was uh, after the war, you know, everything is, was devastated, and uh, it's very hard to make a living like that. If you want to raise a family, not very, very good, but at least, you know, uh -huh. fair. Well, and uh, that's where the, the, my point is, to, to cross the ocean to America. Better life for uh, children. Uh-huh, yeah. Now, what did you see of World War II, personally? I was in World War II. You were in the Army? Yeah, I was in the Army. I was prisoner of war. Oh, where were you? In India. Oh, my. <laughs> So, um, so w did you go in in the beginning of the war? The beginning of the war, yes. Uh huh. And what? And what? Like, where did you go? And what happened to you? Uh, Just I was, I was in way. Libya, North Africa, and that we were, you know, uh, the regiment. I was black shirt. Oh. And the fact I got a diploma, I was. Uh, and what does that mean to you to be a black shirt? Well, we, every, he, all Italy was, uh, they were fascist. Mm -hmm. I was young, you know, you, I grew up under Mussolini, and everything is, was, you know, better Italy, better, better, better living. Uh, that was the rhetoric. They, 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 they. So I joined the, 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 the fascist. They went in Africa, the war broke out. I went, they sent me in Africa. Over there I was caught prisoner by the British. They were Australian, which really caught me. And uh, they sent it to Egypt. And from Egypt they sent in India, Bombay. This is as a prisoner? A prisoner. Uh -huh. I, I was there for five and five years and nine months. <laughs> How were you treated? And, well, uh, to say the truth, I was treated not too bad, you know. Food was maybe was a little scarce, you know. Uh -huh. But for the rest, uh, inside the barbed wire. You weren't mistreated. No, 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 I, I, only once I was uh, mistreated when I was caught, I ran away from the, I escaped, because I don't like to stay inside, you know, I was young, and um, so I escaped with the, with the intention to reach the, the Japanese in Burma, but they were too far, they were too long away. But that's what you thought. That's, that's what, what I thought, you know. Uh -huh. But after 22 days, I was caught. Were you by yourself? I was with a friend, another sergeant. I was sergeant at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they caught us because he was sick. He had uh, those uh, uh, fever, uh, yellow fever, they call. I don't know what what type it really was, but we were not able to, to all night go, uh, you know, all night. So they caught us. Only then I was tied like a salami, with the hands behind, with the rope, a 
bayonet right in my neck. I, I was brought to prison in Bangalore, on the Missouri State. And then 32 days hard labor. And this was the British that called yeah. it? But the guard, they were uh, Irish. They were Irish. But they have never, never been together with the British anyway. And uh, there are days with the wheel barrel with the square uh, uh, wheel. <laughs> so you have to push that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. They cut to the air like a kojak. And uh, with the, with the, uh, <laughs> there was there some some kind of guys. They pulled the air not to cut. They dig all all day long, fill one hole, dig another, fill one hole, dig another, dig another for 32 days. What happened to your friend who you escaped with? Oh, I never saw him anymore. No. We've been separated, and, and uh, he was very sick. He was vomiting uh, when they got it. So, uh, I never heard of him anymore. And uh, I tried to locate it, but how are you going to do? Inside the prison camp, how can you contact? When I believe contact, no one. So, and, uh, did, you have, did you have a real camaraderie with some of the other soldiers? Oh, yeah. They were very close. But uh, see, the prison camp is kind of a madhouse. Because after so much days, months, he started, uh, started giving uh, numbers for the lotto. And, uh, you know, you spent some time with it. There was a fight. Because when the Mussolini fall, they fell in 1943, they were uh, divided for the, the kings and the fascists. Uh, they were a fight all the time, you know. Oh. Even the deaths. Among the prisoners. Uh -huh. So, it was a very bad uh, period of that, you know. It was a very bad period. So, even among the, even among the prisoners, they would be fighting yeah. either? For yeah. The, uh -huh. Because, you see, uh, Mussolini, they did the establish in North Italy, the Republic of Salo, with the Germans, of course, you know, they pulled him. Uh, and the king was uh, on the south of Italy, under the British, uh, yeah, American. Uh, so there were uh, the fight um, among themselves, you know. Did you begin to question yourself about Fascism, or well, I, in case I could ask you, you question yourself yes, the, 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 the futility of uh, the wars. For what? I said, you got a war. I don't know. What do you want to get? Uh, somebody has a territory. What do you want to do? You question politicians. So you follow up. We are the words. We are follow up. What are you going to do? Well, something else? That's the trend, uh, it is, like, uh, like anything else. But uh, I knew, since the beginning of the war, we were going to lose. I was 100% sure. Help me guard if I say the truth. I was absolutely sure that we were going to lose the war. But did, did you um, did you feel like you had to fight? I mean, did you feel no, like you had to go? No, no. I didn't like it. The, 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 I felt to the, not to to fight at all. But I have no choice. I have to be there. So what are you going to do? Be a deserter? Uh, you can't do that. Otherwise, they're going to shoot you anyway. And uh, so that was the right. It was a bad period of my life at that. Mm. Very bad. I lost uh, between the war and the army about five, almost six years of prison. Uh, 
uh, about 10 years of my life. Um, I was 19 or so, and then I went home. I was 30. Uh, and uh, for what? Yeah, when you look for back nothing, on it now. Nothing, nothing, uh -huh. nothing. Nothing. I was uh, <coughs> not poor, poor, but I was, as I was before, I was. So you really had nothing to gain. Nothing from at it. all. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Now, did you know? Did you know your wife before you went in the army? When I was in the army, she was in my own town, but uh, never paid attention because that she was, uh, you know, I'm a nine years older, oh, uh -huh. so she was really too little. When I went back, then she was. 24 at the time, and, uh, and I was 30, uh, no, 32, mm -hmm. no, she was 23, I was 32, so we got married, you know. Mm -hmm. Did your parent? did your family know her family? Yes, my family was, uh, my mother, uh, she, she died during the war, you know, they bombed my town, and uh, mm -hmm. she fell on the stairway, and, and at uh, that time, a facility of uh, hospital, uh, there was no more nothing in it. That was almost on the end of the war, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, she, uh, my father, no, my father, he died, he passed away in 1971. So it's all right. Did you have brothers and sisters? I got a one, bro uh, one brother, one sister still living in Italy. And uh, another passed away, another brother passed away. So do, were you the only one who came from your family? Yes. I, uh, mm -hmm. No, no, I, I called my brother, not an older brother. He came over here. He worked for me also. Oh. And uh, because I was in business. And uh, I went back because I was better off. He was already old, you know. And the, the few dollars uh, pension of here will leave it better there, you know, mm -hmm. for ex exchange money. Mm -hmm. Now, did you work at, at, at construction when you were in Italy or no? I was uh, in construction in Italy with my father. Ah. And I work over here. I started to be a laborer. And uh, after that, uh, little by little, I started my own. Uh, business. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk about that, but let's just say, do you remember when you left? Left what? Left Italy. Do you remember oh, leaving? Oh, yeah, I yeah. remember. Well, uh, so you, your wife was already here. Yeah. And then why did you come when you did? Because she called me. Otherwise, I was going to come in. And uh, she called me, and, and we came. And you came with your son? Yeah, I brought my uh, my young, uh, older Older son, Giancarlo. He was uh, five years old. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you were working while while your wife was here. You were working construction yeah, was, and you yeah. were t raising Giancarlo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in, yeah. Uh -huh. And did you have help? Did you have other family around that were helping? Yeah, it was my sister. Uh -huh. My sister there to take care of things. You know, my father, of course, was living at that time, and. Uh, I was all, all right, and then when we left, I brought the Jenny over here, and then after 12 years, we went back. Uh -huh. How did you feel when you were leaving? Oh, well, you will, you see your motherland, your friends. You see, living in Italy is a different life. What's from different? Here. Well, how is it different? It's very different is this. Over here, everybody is uh, almost... Uh, on his own. In other words, you work, you try to do much more than it. Italy, it's, the life is more sweet because they don't work so much like over here. They don't work that much. What do they do instead? Take it easy. Fiesta. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is when you, they work all, they take works on Main Street. The main street of the town, they walk up, down, there are cafes, tables outside, you can have 
ice cream, glass of, let's say, ginger ale, or orange juice, things like that, you know, for beer, of course. I like a beer. Uh, that's beside the point. And, uh, <laughs> perhaps, uh, to get together, more together, uh, of yet a little more open field. You on your own, I am on my own. Good morning, yes. Uh, maybe it's going to rain today. All right, if it rains, I'll take the umbrella. <laughs> and, uh, and see, this, this is our very, very, uh, the life is more and more sweet there because Oh, the, uh, let's say this nice place, mm-hmm. but where we talk next the door. You don't know your neighbor. I don't no even I, I don't even know his, her name because they moved about a year ago. Over there, you still see more of a family with the people, more uh, togetherness, and maybe they even uh, <laughs> gossip on you. Oh yeah, we gossip. Yeah. That's that's uh, uh-huh. the main thing, the main dish. Uh-huh. And uh, but uh, we, uh, you see, you go downtown, everybody, you are uh, you are as a stranger. There, just people running up and down. That's the difference between Italy and Italy. Uh-huh. And that's what you like about it. Oh, well, that's the only thing I I miss. Yes. Yeah. The rest, <laughs> uh-huh. I don't care. How about the people in this country who came from Italy? Do they act? A little bit the same way as the people do in 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 Italy. Well, they they actually they don't do that, but if they get together, they they go back, they fall back. Otherwise, they won't act like that. Everybody over this in this country, everybody thinks to gain. In other words, the work you do a little more, a little more, a little more. In Italy, it's different. In other fact, I go very often there. You know. I don't know this year because like my wife told you I went through some testing, you know, my health. And uh, when I reached there, on the place, my own town is not a big town. It's about 30,000 people live there. But you see all these people, and I, it seems a feast. Uh, I asked my brother, he's, uh, he was chief of police there. and. Uh, they now he retired also, he's 75. I said, uh, what's right? There's a feast today, some, some event today, eh? Huh? What a feast. Feast all the time like this, you see. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. I'll be well dressed, I said, so that, no. How you look? <laughs> who, does, who does the job? <laughs> uh-huh. Nice, clean, beautiful. The bank. <clears throat> The bank at twelve o'clock. At four o'clock in the afternoon. You got even up. Oh, what do you think? Ah, every cafe, only one in town, big thirty thousand people, only one in charge to be open for services. The other all closed. I'm not saying something uh, like no, it's not. Completely, this is. The very truth. If they change last year, I don't know when I left. <laughs> it but was that's like still that. it's like that. No. And that is the, the case, you know. It completely seems summertime, it seems, seems desert the town. Because uh, because that's the way the life they live. They have a little nap, they go back. While over here, no, they got to go all one shot. It was sandwiches, go back to work. Right. So you have a big meal during yeah. the midday and then take a yeah. little nap. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. Have big meals when I to the digest, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So you miss that? No, well, not, not, not quite anymore, you know. But a little bit, it uh, reminded me that you have more more friends, you know, more... Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't use to do like in this country where I go to visit you in your house and you prepare food and uh, you, you come here to mine. We get together, have a cookout. 
Rivim, Gamir, Bel. For what is known, you don't go to visit. You meet on the street. Today, oh. very seldom you go inside the, to meet somebody in town, unless there is some event, you know, something uh, are unusual. Uh, that you go visit somebody pass away or anything, things like that. But otherwise, you see on the street, hey, how are you? Oh, Goodbye, yeah. good day. Hey. Nice yeah. It's nice. Yeah. So we don't have a social life on the street. No, place. social life over here, no. no. Uh -huh. no. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Over here, if you go visit or, or go to club, I, I don't blog, not clubs anyway. And uh, that's it. This is life. This uh, life is uh, quite healthy because you do yourself, you keep yourself up to the bar, doing some chores on the, around the house, and that's what it is. In Italy, instead, maybe you did a little drinking because it, what do you do? You have a shot. You get a wine, though. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Uh, that's not not, uh, not right. Mm -hmm. uh, I like America. I can't complain the game over here, you know. I can't complain. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I made a pretty good. Mm -hmm. well, well, tell me when you when you went for the for the ship. Do you remember leaving, and what, and did people come around and see you off, or when you were coming with John Carlo when you first came? Yeah, to but the, uh, the only thing it was a lot of uh, confusion in Naples when I took the ship, and there were a lot, a lot of immigrants. There was full of immigrants, that, and uh, you meet someone. Uh, oh, there were a lot, a lot of tourists also from Canada, but that's I do remember. Oh. I do remember that particular things. There were quite a few people from Canada. They were, they went back, you know, Europe, or wherever. But uh, I saw some people there, but I never met anymore because they were the scar. I I came in Connecticut. Some people they went to Philadelphia. They went to you know, another they went to Trenton, New Jersey, and that's it. I never heard no more from them. And uh, there was a, a bride for an American. This uh, Italian girl, she married an American, and uh, she was only 17. Uh, I was I was told by his father, her father, to to keep an eye on her, you know, because she was very very uh, from a small town and nearby Zulmore. So I watched that, but after a few days, she was. Uh, as they hold the ship, so, uh, three, four boys around her. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you are on your own. I, I do. I don't have to watch you know, anymore. And she was uh, giving me the address, but uh, somehow we misplaced and I found her no more. She went to Philadelphia. And uh, I said, no more. I, in other words, the one day they, they came with me, I don't. Uh, I never saw any more, any one of them. You mentioned on your questionnaire that you had heard about the Statue of Liberty when you were a little boy. Yes. W what did you know about it? Well, I thought uh, there was something alive. <laughs> you thought it was alive? <laughs> yes, I, when I was little. I was told there was a Statue of Liberty in New York. But uh, but when I came, I I couldn't even see it. You see, Ellis Island is close, but it was very raining and foggy when I came, so I, I couldn't see her. But what I saw on TV, you know, on TV, because at the time there was not even TV, we, we just got a TV a few months after, you know. And uh, I went to uh, New York after, I had a chance to go to New York with the friends, and then I went to see the Statue. It's a big one, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a big one. I went through. Oh, you went inside? Oh, yeah, I went inside. I went inside. Mm -hmm. I went to Well, I went. My brother came over here. I brought him to 
to the Statue of Liberty, uh, Imperial State Building, and uh, I, knew, I, I said I learned I didn't win no more there. I went last year, last time. Uh -huh. I found a different, so uh, that time was not too good, you know. What was it like the time? And I you? saw a big, big, uh, like a barracks, I would say, uh, in a landing place. Why it was then now is different story. Yeah. And uh, so after World War II, it probably looked different. They restored it to an earlier time. Yeah. You know when people were coming through, maybe before World War One or yeah. after World War One. Yeah. So okay. So um, did you spend? Do you remember any experiences at Ellis Island? Uh, Anything that happened to you there? Uh, uh, I don't remember. No, no. How about when you left? Uh, well, what, did, who did your wife come to Ellis Island? How did you? When did you see your wife after you got here? I, she came to New York. Right. I saw her uh, on uh, I think railroad station. Oh no, no. I don't remember Grand where Central I met. Central or Penn Station or maybe Hoboken. I don't know what, what I mean. Maybe a New York across what they got hand. I had a very strong headache also. I was looking for aspirin. It was a raining, confusion. Uh, yeah, and he was crying. I was uh, fed up, you know. They thought, uh, at least I learned they, they treat you not, uh, not uh, were a little rude, I would say, you know. Not uh, friend, very friendly. Of course, they are to to you deal with a lot of people, a lot of immigrants come in and they pushing, pushing, you know, this way. But uh, I don't recall it. So you were looking for aspirin. Yeah. And then, what, wh where did you see your wife then? Where was she? She when I saw her, I don't remember because I don't remember because where it was. Not on a port, uh, on this, not on this island, on a board. Because uh, I, I, I had a trunk, they, they took the, my trunk, they brought, uh, uh, they took $12 out of me. For the trunk? For the trunk, the oh. move from Ellis Island, you know. Oh. Uh, the oh. address, they took the other. In other fact, I had only $12. I said, this guy, they, they, they watch me, they maybe they can take rights. So, I, and uh, see it when I miss my wife and then, the, the train, and then I fell asleep on the train. Mm -hmm. And then you, you so arrived the, in West Hartford? Right. Yeah. When the, uh, we had a house already out on the Lawrence Street, she rent the, Four rooms, I rented six, six family house, flat, and uh, here we bought the, well, the, the things you really need, the bed, you know, uh, you know things. Uh, but to, to, to say the truth, the first few months they were tough. Yeah. What What was hard in the beginning? What was hard? Very tough. You had to work. I don't know the uh, English word. Uh, so the friends, so I got the job in construction. I had a Sunday shoes. I went to work uh, on the beach. I lost one shoes made all mud. <laughs> so a very little pay, a dollar and a half an hour. Rain, you don't get paid. So on the end of the week, maybe you get a few dollars. I I used to pay twenty dollars a month for the houses so of twenty dollars a month. Uh, she she worked uh, also a royal factory, typewriter factory, uh, for a few months, and then, then uh, she left. You know, very. That's it. But when I started, I started having to be a 
first a labor and then a mason, bricolaire, you know, and uh, a little more money, and says, you, you take care, yeah, here is born twins. And uh, 56 says, okay, you take care of the kids, and home. I work, and that's it. And we went over. By little, by little, I started over seven, eight years. I was, you know, able to communicate. Uh, I started doing a little job, you know, little by little. Started began Mason contract. So you started as a Mason contractor yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, 1967, I started to be a general contractor. Uh, we're, we're pausing here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so little by little you became a general contractor. Yes. Did you did you know how to construct in war? I went to school. Oh. Over here, a technical school in Hartford, a flat bush avenue, oh. to learn about the blueprint. Uh, otherwise, how can you do? You are blind, you know. I, what I need, what I need to me was the basic. The basic, not uh, everything, because I know already from Italy with my father. And uh, with that, a bit, uh, I was working already about a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, uh, you got to know a lot of things, even if you don't speak very well. And uh, because I went to school in Italy, you know, I went to a technical school also. And... Uh, by little, went to school. So uh, I was able to communicate, see the blueprint, how read that. And that was the basic, you know. I did quite a few jobs. As a matter of fact, I, I am, uh, if you read the, the white one, not the, the, the picture, yeah. that's a, a horrific title I got. Oh. I am a cavalier. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, Italian. Great. Republic nominated me cavalier. See, because what does that mean, a cavalier? Means, means uh, uh, chevalier. <laughs> you know, chivalrous. No, no, cavalier. You are a, a title, honorific guy. It's not. Oh, uh, uh -huh. It's not. Uh, it's an honorary no, title. No, 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 honor. Uh -huh. Honorific. And uh, that's what I said, because I done quite a few jobs in you know, here. Yeah. Um, school. Well, uh, if we could just go back then. When you were in Italy, you yeah. went to technical training? Yeah, in the school, yes, what in Italy. What did you do? Uh, what was the training? What the training was the, the, the school. Obviously, that would be, obviously, would be um, high school diploma. Uh -huh. But I didn't take the, the diploma there. I didn't even take the diploma. But that was the idea, you know. Mm -hmm. I was doing the high school. I went to the high school. Elementary, I passed it to elementary, and then I went to the high school for three years. So I was not uh, really but illiterate. That, well, but, but, but did you study construction? No, not over there. Okay. I was with you my father. With father. I was with my father. Yeah. I see. But when you came here, I you went, went and studied I went, about yeah, the blueprint. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then you started your own company? I started my own company, yes. And then I took a, 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 a German. Uh, yeah, he was also like me. He was an iron engineer. He was a, a superintendent of another, uh, another company. And we started together, you know, to be a general contract. Uh -huh. And then did you employ other people? Oh, yeah. I, I used to have quite a few people sometime. Mm -hmm. sometime. Uh -huh. And what kinds of jobs did you do? Did you take on? School, I built a school, Buckley, Buckley High School in, in Hartford. Mm -hmm. I built a superior court in Manchester, town nearby there. I built a housing project, Springfield Mass. I built a pump station, control the flood in Hartford. I built a firehouse. I mean, hospital, small hospital. That's wonderful. So, uh, yeah. 
Well, you must be quite proud of that. Yeah, but uh, money, uh, not too much. Not too much. Yeah. Because competition is a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to bid but, on these yeah. things. You got to bid. Uh, it's all right, but I can't complain. I don't complain. I'm uh, got a house of a house of and uh, you know. The health now is well. I'm 86, you know. Uh, you look uh, wonderful. You look healthy. Yeah, but it's still uh, the kicker. The kicker. <laughs> so, what would you say was the high point of your life? What would you say has brought you a lot of satisfaction in your life? Maybe when I get to my pension, <laughs> I give up everything. Uh huh. Oops, oh, really I don't know. Let me put that back on. That's okay. Um, so, uh, do you think of yourself as Italian and American? How do you think about yourself that way? <coughs> well, I feel that I'm an Italian-American. Mm -hmm. More American than Italian now. More American than Italian. Because you've been here longer? I've been longer over here. I got some satisfaction of here too. You know, to be a contract of, which is not easy. You can be, can be one house outfit. It's a different story. But if you are if you deal with the Corps of Engineer, Corps of Engineer, you deal with the federal government. I did the job in Manche, uh, in Springfield with the federal government, law housing project. It's a 168 apartment. It's an not, uh, it's a big, huge apartment. And I did some uh, even in Hartford, I did some uh, jobs in the state capital. Uh, new, new boiler room, and new boiler room, and new elevator, new uh, lot of things inside there. With the governor, you know, I was a friend with him. Mm. And uh, it's a lot, a lot of things. Uh, do you think you could have done something like that if you had stayed in Italy? Not quite, no, not no. quite, no, because I was, really, I was not very eager to work. Why was that? Because to work, you know, you got a more friend, uh, more leisure, leisure uh, way. I see. While over here, you have to work. You go up or you drown, either way. Hmm. That's interesting because a lot of people who came here talk about you have to work hard. Yeah. But what you just said is, if you were over there, you wouldn't feel you had to work so hard. Not so hard, because the life doesn't require, see, oh, doesn't require you to have uh, some kind of the, 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 the incentive to, to, uh, to push you out. Sorry, let it go. Uh, grow grass. Horse, no, not, who is it? This is Italian. Campa cavallo, a little bagrese. In other words, the live horse. Well, the grass will grow. So it will be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Instead of here, tomorrow never come. Mm -hmm. This is the difference. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people over here, they work. Over there, they don't work. Mm -hmm. they, they're crazy. And that's, uh, that's why the leaves, uh, it's a little bit down. Mm -hmm. Now, now in North Italy, it's much better off than South mm -hmm. because they work. They work so, and they, so you are entitled, if you work, you are entitled, the rewarding for your work, or what do you do? Uh, that's what it is. Uh, while uh, over here, you get one job, you want to do well, you want to do better, you want to do more, you got a two, you want a four, you got a four, you want eight. Were you that kind of person when you came here? When you when you came here uh, at first, were you driven to to uh, with ambition to get ahead? Well, when I came over here, I was a little stunned working as a laborer. Uh, I said, oh my God, I went down. I, said, I became a laborer in Italy. I was amazing, and uh, well, little by little, little by little, necessity pushed you. You are the necessity. You need the house. You need to live a little better. We were in four room on um, Lawrence Street flat. Winter time, as we you froze your stove, your gasoline to no petroleum.
you no know, gasoline, otherwise you blow up, and uh, to to warm the, the the house because they were freezing there. At first, were you living worse here than you did over there when you first came here? Yeah, I was a little better there. Living conditions here. No, no, I was better off there. Yeah. Yeah, because I have my room. I just married. Two rooms, but two were okay, beautiful. But uh, over here, it was not, uh, winter time was tough. And we had a bottle of oil, she put oil, olive oil. It was froze half. <laughs> see, they were solid. Uh, you see, so it was not, uh, it was not after I said, I gotta move out here. In fact, we've been uh, in that place there four years, and then I bought a house uh -huh. and a three family, uh -huh. and then we started uh -huh. moving up. When you when you were first here, were you sorry? Were you sorry? Were you disappointed? Well, the first to say to be the truthful, I told my wife, let's go back. I told her, let's we bought a little furniture, like I said before, you know. Necessity, uh, you need it. But I said, let's let's sell, let's go back. As if I gotta do this job over here, uh, it's a murder for us. But I stay, stay, well, stay. All right, we'll see later on, later on. As the time goes by, you get better and better. And the time after, I don't regret to to remain. I don't regret now. <laughs> If you were right, you do that till I came to life. It was not, no more appropriate for me. You know, I got pushed up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you have a social life when you first were here, those first few years? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were not a flag. Like, like I said before, you go visit me, I visit you every week almost. After, you know, you, you work in days, my Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, we visit you, I don't think I may visit me, we obey, or go uh, Riverside Park, or you know, about the establishment for, for the children, you know, we were all the time around, oh yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go to the beaches, uh, that's it, mm -hmm. a friend also, we used to bring some, uh, some, uh, Pot to cook at the beach. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. The one I didn't like it was on the way back. You had to wash the dishes. I said to my wife, "We usually, you know, you gotta be an open mind like the American people. They do. Paper. Uh, they they take a paper <laughs> dish. Then they have to use, throw it away. Oh no, we gotta use china. Yeah." You feel to clean. I watch the dish. I just want water and ice. I got it. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Now, were there, other, were there people from other countries yeah. in Europe that had come to this country yeah. too, immigrated, that you were friendly with? Or was it usually people from Italy? Oh, there was, uh, well, there are some also. There were Greeks. They live on the second floor. Oh. <laughs> and we were in touch with, with them, <laughs> with a couple of Greeks, families, you know. But uh, the most of we were uh, the Italian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Italian, Italian, we had this debate. Because even the Greeks uh, uh, communicate is, uh, uh, the language barrier, in other words. They, sp they spoke English bad, we spoke bad. So, most of the end signal. <laughs> <laughs> so, w how about the people you worked with? Were they mostly Italian, or were they? No, Mexican? no, there was uh, they, they were uh, wherever I got the job, you know, because uh, when I I was working the first with the, the American construction company, the owners they, uh, they were Italian. But after that, when you are working with your your hands, you can look for a job. No matter what, say from American, French, German, whatever you got to work, you do. You got to show what you are able to do and get paid for it, whatever you do. And that's why I, I work all over. Yeah. I work all over. I work in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. You got to go to Rhode Island. Eh? 
No, I'm going to New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire. Well. And, uh, so, so you would travel. You would oh, go, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. You would go oh, wherever the job yeah, was. Yeah, whatever you you got to chase the job. The job doesn't chase you. No, did you? Would you like then stay? Say you went to Rhode Island. Would you stay there that No, month? no, no. Or you come travel, back? commuted. Uh -huh. uh, even even the Massachusetts, uh, North uh, Northampton, uh, and the University of Massachusetts. I used to get up in the morning, four. Get to work. I better, there were uh, 35, uh, 90, almost 100 miles one way. I used to go that mm. twice. Uh, and uh, I never stood in all the expenses. You know, you, you could use a little more gas, but still you are able to save a few bucks, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, um, how do you like this time in your life that you that you're retired and you're not? Oh, well, to begin with, it's nice you you shed everything is the responsibility. Uh, you drop that, but after a while you feel I felt a little bit uneasy because I was working all of a sudden you're doing nothing. So what do you do? You feel sad. You feel. I'm, very, I'm sorry that you left the job. And uh, I will, uh, I will, li I would like to do something, but now no more because at my age, you know, at my age, don't do any more uh, things. I just cut the, the grass, mow the grass, the, the regular, build a little garden on the, on inside of the, uh, the yard, you know, things like that. Why not? Uh, Big things, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the big things anymore. But is this a nice time in your life? Well, now that you don't have to have the responsibility of yeah, making a yes, living? Yes, yes. Yes. But still, you miss the job. To me, I don't know, either. To me, I still, uh, in the morning, get up, you go here to do, see a building and going up, uh, you know, it was something, uh, accomplishment you, you have. Not to lose. Do the job. Because I had an accounting, I mean, uh, an estimator, he made a big boo boo on a, a big job. And uh, I instead to gain a few dollars, I lost a few dollars. See, you got to think of that too. Because he had hundreds of windows. He, when you, you don't charge for the window as you build the window, it's empty. So you don't charge it for bricks, blocks, whatever. And he did, uh, took twice off for that. So in other words, I, I found out myself with uh, over 20,000 blocks, special blocks less. Mm. I used to put in on my expense. Right. Well, you got, that's give you, you know, the, yeah. the uh -huh. incentive, the, the bullshit to, the, to do. Uh, what, okay. job, what job is your greatest satisfaction? What job that you did that when you see it, you feel... Like you really did something wonderful. Well, the, the Springfield Bergen Circle, 168 apartment for low income people. Mm. Everything, seven stories high. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, nothing because I didn't went to school in this country. I learned a few words that we uh, mm -hmm. communicated with the other people around. I went just for three months in a technical school to read the, the, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. well, I wish I, I, I studied that. I know the details, and that's it. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. Okay, young lady. Okay, I think... See, because I, I, I got to go. Nobody else can go, but me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank you so much. No, thank very, you. Very, very interesting. No, do it, do it. You're really a success of yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, in thank you life. to you. You were the guest of the special. Now this will be at Ellis Island. So no, just very good. We'll I'll be. be we'll be there. Excuse okay. me. Let me just say I'm speaking with Luigi. Mark Antonio, who um, came from Italy in 1954, and in he's 86. He came here in May 1954. He's 86. It's October 5th, 1999, and I'm Janet Levine for the National Park Service. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Excuse me. Okay.